So, you might be wondering, is the Ryzen 5000 series still relevant now that 6th gen is out? Well, the CPU gains in the 6000 series aren't much to get excited about. The main reason to jump on board is if you're wanting that nice big graphics boost, especially at the high end. But many of you in the audience often remind me that you're not playing games on your mini PC. So, you just want something speedy for everyday computing and video playback. And if you don't need USB 4, PCIe Gen 4 and DDR5 memory support, you can save a lot of cash by getting a 5th gen Ryzen unit instead. And that's what we're checking out today. The Raytan TR7 features the 8 core 16 thread 5800U with Vega graphics and is only available as a pre-build. It's 469 US dollars for the 16 plus 512GB configuration or 599 for a doubling of both. I was loaned the 1TB model for this review. It's a simple looking black plastic box and reminds me of DICE for some reason. It comes with a wall power supply, monitor mount, user guide, as well as a short and long HDMI cord. On the front is a headphone jack, USB-C and dual USB-3, all a 10 gigabit. On the side is a micro SD card reader. On the rear is a barrel jack input, dual HDMI 2.0, dual USB 2 and 2.5 gigabit ethernet. To open it up, there are four screws to remove and thankfully not under the rubber feet. Prying it open is a bit more difficult if you don't have a repair kit, but grab something thin and it shouldn't be too bad. As always, watch out for the Wi-Fi cables. The SATA connector is included inside, allowing for 2.5 inch drive expansion. The included drive here is a Kingston Gen 3 NVMe. Underneath is the M.2 Wi-Fi card, CMOS battery, and the included DDR4 3200RAM is also Kingston branded. Getting the board out doesn't require any more screws. Here's the heatsink with a couple of copper heat pipes and the fan. I give this Mini an easy rating for taking apart and putting back together. Windows 11 Pro is included with the pre-build, but Ubuntu worked without a problem off a USB drive. I haven't reviewed a Ryzen 4800 or 6800U, so there won't be a generational comparison here. But let's see how this one compares against the Raytan TR5 5600U and the latest gen 6600U. In Cinebench R20 single core, the Raytan 5800U was 3% ahead of the 5600U, but 1% behind the Morphine 6600U. Multicore is where things get dicey. The TR7 had very inconsistent scores, fluctuating from as low as 2500 to 3400. As always, I did a multi-run average, which put it 7% ahead of the 5600U, but it's behind the 6600U by 10% even though that's only a 6 core CPU. In the short video encoding test, the 5800U was ahead of the 5600 by 12%, but behind the 6600 by 1%. The included Kingston NVMe drive is a decent performer for both read and write, but it's not saturating the Gen 3 socket. In 3 Mark DX11, the Raytan TR7 is 5% ahead of the 5600U, and 21% behind the 6600U. In DX12, the lead jumps to 10% over the 5600, but still 22% behind the 6600. For the game comparisons, I put it against the 6600U and the 6800H to show how the graphics compare against the latest generation. In Forza Horizon 5, the 5800U is around 20% behind the 6600U. For Doom Eternal, both units perform almost identically. And the same with Elden Ring. In Cyberpunk, the 6600U leads by around 12%. The biggest difference is in God of War, with a 6600U ahead by around 60%. Emulation wise, 
The 5800U is consistently behind the 6600U in every game tested. The BIOS has plenty of options and allows you to choose how much memory to dedicate to the integrated graphics. There's also a memory overclocking option, but going up just one step with it resulted in the Mini failing to boot and needing a CMOS reset. Idle power draw is on the lower end of the scale at 7 watts, and the max power draw of 44 watts is also pretty low. So I was surprised to see max CPU temp hit 100C, the highest of this lineup and noise levels were high for both idle and load, which didn't make much sense as the cooler looks fine, especially for 44 watts. So I repasted it and made sure it was assembled properly, but still the same result. The Mini draws in air from the bottom and is supposed to push it out the back. Yet when I put my hand there, very little hot air comes out, and it heats up really quickly. Flipping the unit upside down improved thermals with better airflow, but noise level stayed the same, and it didn't fix the inconsistent performance on a multi-core workload. The SSD hit a max device temperature of 73C, which is high, as there's no cooling for it either. So let's check out the pros and cons for the Raytan TR7. The box is an interesting design, and is easy to disassemble. Unlike some other minis, it comes with decent quality RAM and SSD. At a max of 44 watts, it doesn't draw much power. But the TR7 runs really hot, as the cooling doesn't seem to push the hot air out, which means it's one of the noisiest units I've tested yet. CPU performance is very inconsistent, and there's no cooling on the SSD. Raytan's TR5 on the other hand, was a very quiet 5600U mini PC, and you can check out the review here. Cheers!